ship. A cargo conveyor on the other side leads right to the docking bay. What is going on guys? Welcome back to more of Let's Play Star Wars Bounty Hunter. First and foremost, I want to give a shout out to my little brother, also known as KRDJMTC, for deleting, no, not deleting, I'm sorry, for reading my microphone. So I played 45 minutes of this, and it was all completely useless, because you couldn't hear it. So I'm doing this all over again. But you gotta love those deaths. All right. The plus side is I do know what I'm supposed to be doing this time. I do wonder if you can get yourself like caught in between there. Like if that if an instant kill. Found a few more posted I'm not gonna find out the hard way if it is. Fine. I'm not sure what those things are. I think they're checkpoint things. Bounties we can collect in here. Let's see, is this one? Yep. Now oh, from the last one, the, the pre-record one, I found out that can actually hurt you. And my partner, whatever her name is, doesn't tell you until you actually accidentally run into it. Oh, 
Oh wait, there's some light over here. Take that. to say I know it. there should be one coming sooner or later. Good aim. And I know if you played, you know, the Star Wars Battle Friends, it tells you that I guess after the Empire was formed, not all the clones were, you know, from from Django. But I mean, there still had to be a few yet, a few left. Yeah, absolutely every single clone that you see in the movies can't aim. Can't hit anything. It would make more sense if Django was like a bad shot. I mean, when you think about it, Boba wasn't that great of a bounty hunter. So I guess that makes sense to some extent. with a jetpack versus a giant spaceship. No aim at this guy over here. And this is the pretty much the whole reason why I prefer this gun more than pretty much anything else you can get during the course of this game because it does everything just fine. I mean, you can take down an entire spaceship with this gun. I mean, the other guns. I like the. I like the. Uh, the fire. The jetpack fire. But. Okay. Get up, get up. This gun just makes everything so much easier. And I say that as I'm getting shot to death. If you don't mind button mashing, it gets the job done. Chapter one. I guess we've got time to keep going. Ugh, I can't believe you're still flying that relic, Django. Why don't you spend some of your hard-earned cash on 
a new ship. Not a chance. She belonged to Jasta Maril. I know, I know. The Mandalorian soldier who took you under his wing. You ever think maybe you hang onto that ship? Those memories. Because you're looking for someone to take under your own wing. <laughs> Ross, you're sounding like a psych droid. What's the info on the Death Stick dealer? With you, it's always business. Jervis Gloom, Coruscant police want him alive. My sources tell me he works the entertainment sector. Think this creep knows anything about the Bandogora? When I find him, I'll ask him. Now I really enjoy this this next chapter, especially Coruscant, because although the game, like I've mentioned before, is kind of hard when it comes to you know figuring out where you have to go next, uh, just how they did this city and that it's such a great place to explore. I think they really hit it on the hit the nail on the head when it comes to this game. I mean. You have to take into consideration that it is a older PS2 game, but I think for the most part they they did it justice. I'd love to see a a sequel or or maybe a like a HD remake of this game for the PS4. That would look that would be pretty cool. But I think I'm gonna end the episode here and uh, we'll explore Corazon in the next episode. Uh, but thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.